Okay, well, it's pretty inspiring to be here. Um, I, I don't know, I just, I, really, I enjoy the energy. Um, the idea that everybody's here trying to help, right? And like enrich the community. Um, I've been through a little bit of stuff in my life, I suppose you could say. And um, at the end of the day, to be able to give meaning and give back a little bit, some of the lessons that I've learned, um, working with at-risk youth is like a really big passion for me. So I'll tell you guys a little bit about my story and I will try not to take too long. <laughs> um, so there was a question that was asked to me. Who are you? And is a question that one will be asked many times in their lifetime. Um, who are you? This could be a really simple answer. It could be quite profound. Um, I remember when I was asked this question on a particular day, and this was a day when I was barely able to walk. I had lost everything, basically, that I owned. Um, all the materials that I had were gone, and I wasn't sure if I would even live a life of any sort of normalcy ever again. Um, I was using a wheelchair to get to my doctor's appointments, and I was unsure how or if I would ever be healed from whatever illness it was that was plaguing me, because I actually didn't know what it was. I was misdiagnosed a number of times. Um, and so this day, I was asked, who are you? And I truly didn't know at that point. It's like, you know, what am I doing? Where, you know, it's like I had lost everything. Who, who am I? So I wanted to say, oh, I'm right here. You know, it's like I'm right here. But it's like, well, wait a minute. There's, you know, there's muscles and what muscles? <laughs> um, organs, ribs, you know. Um, and, and so, you know, well, maybe I'm here. It's all mental. Like, maybe I'm here. Um, so I really thought about this. Um, and I wanted to point to my mind and say it was my mind. But I, rem I was reminded that day that I am the experiencer of this existence. Right? I'm the observer, in a sense, of Ryan Cunningham having an experience. Meaning, not to disconnect me from who I am, but to say that I was me even before this name. I mean, even in the womb of my mother, I was, I, I, there was a soul there. I was having some sort of experience, like, oh, what is this? I'm doing something here, right? I was really, this really, this downtime really connected me with my, my true self, my deepest part of myself. Um, and so I went on this way uh, that day studying and trying to think and think about what this could be. And my point was that I realized that I was more than what I acquired in this life. I was more than even what I do, you know. I realized I was beautiful, I was loved, I was valuable because I am, period. And see, I didn't always know this. So I was raised here in Vancouver and um, I had a dad by the name of Scott who was like my best friend. Um, he was the first one to hold me when I was born, taught me sports, to ride a bike, all that jazz. Pretty much taught me how to be a good dad. Um, but at age eight, I was told actually that he wasn't my biological father. So the tricky part about that was he's a white guy, and so I thought I was biracial. So um, yeah. you wouldn't think that that would be some people could see it as, oh, it doesn't matter, you still have the love, and I did. But at the same time, it's a rude awakening. Like, where, how do I fit? What does it mean to be a black male in this society in the, in the context of in America? And how am I supposed to act? And who am I supposed to be? And what does this mean? And, and I didn't really, you know, because I loved him so much, um, you know, I felt a lot of um, loyalty to him, of course. You know, but at the same time, my mom had told me she had been married previous to him. And this minute I saw that picture, I felt loyalty to him. That was my biological father. He was like half of me. So on that day, I just felt like my fixed stars kind of split in half. You know, they became fell in cardboard as if it was like what I knew to be so real and I trusted actually wasn't that way at all. And so as the years went on, you know, I was really good in sports. Um, I got, I was actually doing pre-algebra in like fourth grade. Um, and um, as the years went on, I think by ignoring some of the emotional stuff I was going through, it came out in my teen years. So in the teen years, I just, I started, you know, I started really kind of acting out. Um, 
I can still remember when I was younger, I would try to pretend I was biracial still. Like, so if my dad came in, and I'm with my dad and my mom, and anyone asked me, he's like, is that your dad? Yeah, of course that's my dad. Oh, so you're half white. Yeah, what do you think? That's my dad. But inside, though, it was kind of damaging, though, because it was like I was saying, well, I'm not really, it's not okay to be me, you know? And I wasn't even really sure what that meant. And so a lot of times in our, in our society, um, at least me being raised in a place was, I was pretty much the only black kid in my school, actually. So I had to look to what I thought, whatever stereotypes that I was embracing, to what I thought being a black male meant to be. And so that's what I was acting out and trying to live out. But it really, I really wasn't getting to the source of, like, of who I was. So as I grew up, Juvenile Hall was like my second home. So, I mean, so I went from one end of the spectrum to the other. I was, I was in juvenile institutions. Um, um, I mean, you name it. To this day, I could run into any of those guards from that era, and they're like, Ryan! <laughs> you know? um, <laughs> it just happened, actually. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, although I, my rap sheet was ridiculously long, and I put my mom through so much stuff, and and what have you, I would still get the same like response from these guards. Why are you here? Like, how did you end up in here? Like, it doesn't match your, it, the way you are. Doesn't match with this. I used to ask myself the same thing. And back to that question, who are you? It's like that was echoing in my in in my life the whole time in the back of my mind, trying to figure that out. Um, I fast forward a bit. At eighteen, I ended up doing about three years in prison. Um, and I think that was the ultimate search. I was trying to really figure it out. So I thought that, well, you know, maybe I need to go back. It was religion I didn't follow. I need to follow that. That maybe was the guide. And I should have done that right. And I got out and I just, by the way, it's been 11 years since I've been out. And I, you know, never again, it's not happening. So I've been, I've been clean slate, you know, ever since just to throw that out. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, so I thought going back to church would kind of do it for me, but I kind of lost footing in that uh, being it was it's pretty strict. And um, I was uh, it got in trouble for having a girlfriend outside of that religion. So um, I just kind of felt like just who was I? I was trying to find who I was supposed to be. And I spiraled into a reckless lifestyle of drugs, using and selling. Um, I even had an overdose where I almost died. I was con convulsing um, in a hospital bed. Um, it was a, a near-death experience, actually. It was quite traumatic. And um, to make matters tougher, a few months after that even, I actually began dealing with a health issue where I was una unable to walk. And that's kind of where I began this thing at, I was telling you guys about. I was unable to walk. Um, I had paralysis of my limbs. And one time I even remember screaming out, and it was so like agonizing the way I screamed. Like, I didn't even recognize my own self, my own voice. It was um, it was as about as bare bottom as you can get, you know. Um, so I exhausted Western medicine. I tried this, I tried that. Um, they misdiagnosed me a few times. I ended up finding acid. Eastern medicine was helping me through acupuncture, and chiropractic, and um, through naturopathy, and I started healing holistically. And um, they actually found arsenic in my hair follicle analysis. So that was like, everyone was like, oh, aha, right? Here's the physical aspect of what's going on. But by then, I'd already been tackling this thing through a holistic view. So it was like, okay, so I, now I have physical toxins I've got to get out of my system. I have emotional toxins I need to get out of my system. I have spiritual toxins I need to get out of my system. I just need to detox <laughs> all around, right? And that's what I did. And I'm talking six years of, I mean, I moved back in with my mom. I'd been living in Arizona. I moved back in with my mom, and it was a, uh, detoxing of, of all of those, and it was work, work. Um, I got to a point, though, um, where I was strong enough with my acupuncturist, who's double as my counselor, and basically told me, I think you're ready to start school. And I'm like, what? I almost took offense, because it's like, my day was so hard, and I was still barely making it. And I also, by the way, I'm a single father, so I, I have full custody of my son. So he's five now. At the time, he was two when they told me. So I'm looking at it like, you guys are crazy. But sure enough, I put my foot out there. I ended up getting back in, into an apartment. It's my son and I right down the street from Clark College. And so I started my journey here at Clark. That's such a big deal. Um, so Clark has been like the physical space that's like 
given me um, room to grow in. You know, I had to rebuild my self-confidence wise, I had to rebuild who I was. Um, during that transformation time period, I actually changed completely. I'm a totally different person. And so I didn't even know what that looked like on how to walk out into the community and, and be this person. So at Clark here, it's, I've, been, I've been able to facilitate. This has facilitated my growth. And this is really, this is really true. And that's why I'm also passionate about education and teaching because at the end of the day, you are changing lives. That is so real. Um, so, it, you know, because of time, I can continue on. But, um, you know, I, at the end of the day, I did end up patching things up with my biological father and finding kind of a new spiritual space. And, and through doing this now, I'm working with at-risk youth. So I worked a little bit at an internship at Lane Middle School doing that and um, teaching through hip hop. So I, I do conscious hip hop. And it's like, you know, you get to these kids and you got seventh graders all sitting in a circle. And all of them, you know, they're throwing spitballs at each other and pulling on each other. It's like, how do you get them to listen? And as soon as I tell them, oh, I'm a hip hop artist, so all of a sudden they want to hear what I have to say. It's like I have their eyes. And it's at that moment where my lyrics, I can, I literally would pass it, my lyrics around to them and tell them, okay, let's break some of this down. What am I saying? Let them hear it. And, you know, trying to teach them through that way, any way we can get to them. Um, so I just, at the end of this, I'm wrapping it up. I'm just, I just like to be, I'm very gracious, very gracious, extremely. Um, this is a story I told it myself, but it was many hands that helped me along the way. Um, um, many people I'd like to thank. Um, one, two people actually here at Clark College I'd like to thank. One would be Edie Blakely um, from Career Services um, for suggesting that I share my story today. Um, for being approachable and caring and having me in the office and talking one-on-one -on -one and um, deeply appreciative for that and believing in me. Um, Sarah Weinberger, as well at, at Career Services, um, has pulled me to the side before and actually and told me, um, you know, anything you need, anything you need to long on this path, as long as you're doing this because this is what you're meant to do. She's like, I got you. Meant a lot. Um, also, and my sister sitting back there right behind Sarah Weinberger, um, and sis, I'd like to thank you for, uh, don't do it, Ryan, don't do it, <laughs> supporting me, um, crying with me, laughing with me, hurting with me, babysitting, <laughs> <laughs> fighting with me, loving with me through the story of tragedy turn triumph. So um, today, I asked myself, who am I? And the answer is more like, what am I? I am beautiful, loved, and valuable simply because I am. And out of that space, Ryan Cunningham will deliver my gift to the world and to the youth. And I see, because I see it in myself, I see it in those teenage boys, I see it in this audience, I see it in nature, I see it in the world. So may we all know that we are beautiful, loved, and valuable.